How do I do it? Okay. You do it. You do it. Hey everybody, it's Walker and Nick at Full Spectrum Laser and welcome to Laser Talk. What's up everybody? Today we've got a very special edition of Laser Talk. We're going to be talking specifically how lasers and the application of lasers can be used in the wedding industry, which is a huge multi-billion dollar industry here in the United States. It makes a ton of money and there's one type of industry you always want to be a part of. That's an industry when people aren't caring too much what things cost as they're making decisions and weddings are the perfect form of that. Uh, we set the mood here. Obviously, uh, this, is, this seems a little much, uh. maybe a little too much. <laughs> Uh, can we do something else? Uh, that's a little better. Okay, we'll take that. Um, as we go through, we talk weddings. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things. Um, obviously, uh, the applications for weddings that um, are real obvious, uh, we'll go through those. But we'll actually talk about some professions that use the laser. They could either use the laser as an addition to their current offering or add the laser on as an uh, additional service to other offerings. Yeah, sounds so, what are we, we so let's go through some of the things yeah. that uh, we that you can make uh, that uh, you know kind of work your way through the whole wedding day. Now, what's the very first thing you get when you are aware that a wedding is going to happen, Walker? Uh, invitation. Invitation. Yeah. So, what's a cool thing you can do with that? Imagine if all of your wedding party, or maybe some of your distinguished guests, or maybe everyone on a small wedding party, got a hand laser cut invitation like this, delicately cut with a his and hers uh, logo on the front, uh, explaining about your special day. Um, even better, uh, when you get to the wedding, there's tons of things you can do with the laser cut, whether it is things like this, which would go in the center of a table and introduce Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Now that can stand alone, <coughs> or you can make it a pick and go into like the middle of a bouquet or something like that. Absolutely. Uh, types of things like this, once you design this once, you can use this type of product for many different things. Like you said, uh, things go inside bouquets, decorations for tabletop, um, present table uh, decorations, all sorts of different things. Um, another great thing that Walker made, these neat little placeholders for some of your guests. So you can have a nice little laser cut placeholder for all of your guests incoming. This is something they can take home from the wedding as well. Um, another great thing, I think you have a bunch of these files up already in the design yeah, program, right? like six files online for free. Why don't you talk them through this? So that, uh, we have the center guys, and we have five more of these, and then there's a gazebo type piece if you want it more elaborate. For a bigger cake, right? Yeah. So basically this is a cake topper that you can use, and Walker designed a whole bunch of different uh, center sets that, you know, accompany a whole bunch of different types of uh, ceremonies, and that really are just gorgeous uh, silhouettes of people on top of cake. Now you can do it with both, you can take away the gazebo, just have this, uh, use both, but these cake toppers are a great addition to the cake. It's an easy way to, um, you know, add value to the cake and make the, uh, make the event feel a little bit more rich and uh, luxurious, a little more personalized by doing stuff like that. Yeah. And you can take their silhouette and do yeah, their own. Yeah, the beautiful thing is in uh, sort of the same way Walker walked through the um, personalization of the game figures, you could literally take a photo of the two and use their silhouette as a cake topper very, very easily. So if you can think about this, um, Walker and his beautiful bride-to-be um, on top of a cake and people noticing, oh, whoa, look at that. That looks strangely like yeah. a bag full of water. It must be, it must be <laughs> Walker. I'm just kidding. Um, so you could have the individuals up on top of the cake. Now, what's a, uh, Walker came up with a great little thing for uh, the bachelor parties uh, as you're going out the night before type of thing. There's lots of little uh, chashkis and gifts you want to give to your uh, bridal uh, party. So if you can imagine all of the groomsmen getting something along this line, a nice tumbler <coughs> that says, you know, their name, best man, the date of the thing. And these great tumblers can be filled with coffee or yeah, anything yeah, else right. you want to sip or drink, drink a lot uh, of coffee uh, drink day. a lot of coffee I, I think on the eve before your wedding and things like that but this is a great addition as a gift and then we actually will be going through using uh, the rotary to do an engraving quite like this uh, we put a piece of leather in the glass just so you could see some of the markings there <clears throat> but we did a few different versions here on different powers and settings and we'll talk about how we actually got a little bit cleaner uh, mark using a few different tips and techniques on this but a real easy addition um, to uh, play settings for wines is uh, these now these glasses we actually got at the local Goodwill um, because it's a great place to go and source glassware especially if you're just doing a special one-off with a couple glasses it's easy to go find a pair of glasses at a Goodwill or St. Vincent's de Paul uh, it's mostly because you're gonna find old glass there and old glass was made wonderfully. It's nice and thick, it's dense, it engraves really well. A lot of the glass you go to the store is made 
with this new technology, a new way that's just very thin and brittle and it kind of flakes a lot. Uh, very so cheap. <clears throat> very, very cheap. Uh, cheap, we mean just uh, they found a less expensive way to yeah. manufacture it, which is good for drinking, just not so great for engraving. But you can see older glass that's nice and thick and dense, you can get really great engravings on. Once again, we just have a piece of leather in there just so you can see the engravings of the clear glass. Now, let's say you are a little bit adjacent to a wedding. Let's say you like a wedding photographer or a wedding videographer. You can even make a little personalized gifts like this so that when you turn in your thumb drive with your wedding uh, footage and wedding video on it, you can give them a little keepsake box uh, to keep their wedding on. So you can put your company's logo underneath and then you could easily uh, go and put that up top. Looks like we got a question coming in from Facebook. Um, are there any regulations when it comes to cake toppers? Um, John, I'm guessing that you're talking about what types of material you can use uh, to be safe uh, within the yeah. cake. Um, now, obviously you want to use things that are mm -hmm. FDA approved for safe, but one of the things you can do that's a safe uh, thing that a lot of um, bakers use when they're decorating the cakes is they'll take a little bit of saran wrap and they'll wrap it around the things that are actually going into the cake to protect mm -hmm. the areas of the cake that the cake toppers are going in. So even if you wanted to use like a wood and have a little more rustic look uh, and you're worried about the burnt edges or such going into the cake, an easy thing, just wrap the pins or the, uh, the poles here with saran wrap and then stick it in the cake. You could also use tin foil or other things like that, but we notice people using uh, saran wrap uh, for that type of application. Hope that answers your question, John. Looks like we got another one coming in uh, from Christy Curley. Uh, we also do the tumblers, um, Pisner wine, champagne, other glasses. Um, oh, it looks like the question is down below. Sorry, I do make cake toppers for. That's not a question uh, at all. Sorry about they, that. We they were just, just reading make comments. Cake yeah. yeah, we're just reading conversation. Okay, so let's talk about um, a few of the professions that we can go. Now we kind of went through all the different things. Now, what type of uh, professional uh, would use a laser engraver? Now, we could talk about first <clears throat> what type of serv what type of people you could service having a laser engraver. So let's say you are a laser engraver. You're not in the wedding business at all, but you said, you know what, I could do some of these wedding things. I could service them. Well, how would you connect with that? Well, wedding toppers, you could go one or two ways. You could contact local bakeries that do uh, wedding cakes and get an affiliate deal with them where they could use you to outsource this type of upsell for their product. So instead of having to deal with the clients, like you don't have to deal with the bride and groom, you can just deal with the baker and the baker can use your service to upsell and then he can put a margin on top of that and make a little money for himself as well. Uh, same thing would be true on this type of item. You can go to wedding videographers and wedding photographers and send them a thumb drive uh, that's engraved with their logo on it and send them a little box like this and say, you know, wouldn't yeah. that be great to send to all of your clients? That's and so much better than just handing over just a USB stick. Absolutely. Here you go. It's, it's very impersonal just to give a USB stick. It used to be when you video uh, weddings, you'd get a CD with the wedding on it and have a nice CD case and like a yeah. DVD and all these different things. Crazy. But now it's just a thumb drive or a link to a Dropbox <laughs> that, you know, they download all their things from or that they give to their print shop to, uh, you know, print their files. With something like this, you actually have something tangible and especially when you have packages that you're offering, adding things like this as a free gift for your premium packages are a great way to get people to upgrade to the, the better things because trust me, at a wedding and someone has an option to get a cool free gift with their uh, wedding engraved on it and you have a chance to do branding on the back so when their friends come over and they see it, they can say, oh, who made this great little box with your wedding video in it? Ah, you know, Better Half Productions. Shout out to Better Half Productions in Maine. Ben Jumper does a great job up there if you're looking for any wedding uh, photos or videos done. Um, so what other um, um, professions that we do? I think the obvious one is uh, a wedding planner, right? Oh, yeah. That's so you're everything. All, absolutely. So you're already dealing with all the brides and grooms. So you could sit down with the bride and groom and what, uh, I mean, what are some of the things you could pitch to them? I mean, you could pitch all of these things, right? You could offer all of them. So mm, this could, nuts. it's almost like a Dell type thing where you can kind of pick and choose as you go along, you know, uh, as a wedding planner, my core package is X amount of dollars. Oh, yeah. Then if you want to like add on a hundred dollars here, $200 there for all these different add-ons, they could kind of come to you as a one-stop shop. Now, if you're a wedding planner, you have an assistant. If you think about it, a simple $5,000 purchase to get a hobby laser or a small pro 20 laser, uh, you've just added a huge, huge uh, availability of offerings for your services to all the people that you're already contacting every year anyway. Looks like we have a question over here. Wait. Oh, Jason Cry, we're in Maine. Um, Better Half Productions is um, right outside of uh, Portland. Um, I believe the actual see, uh, name of this town is Lewiston. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm almost positive it's Lewiston, Maine. So Better Half Production in Lewiston, Maine. If you're out there, Jason, uh, maybe give uh, Ben a shot. Maybe he could actually use your, your services. Um, but the other, um, another um, 
excuse me, profession that I think we can talk about that is um, pretty obvious is the um, the maker or crafter that's not using, that's not doing wedding services. So let's say you're already doing, um, and we'll come back to the major, uh, the maker callouts here, Charles. Sorry about that, but let's say you're um, a um, what's a good example? Let's say you just do. Uh, trophy shop stuff. Let's say you are a trophy shop owner and you do signs, trophies, and stuff like that personalized. Why not branch out and offer some weddings? Why not diversify your offerings and just add some of these very simple wedding products and then just link up with one or two um, wedding planners, wedding photographers, wedding um, event spaces and have yourself as an option on their offering. It's a very easy thing to do, very easy connection to make. It costs them nothing, it costs you nothing. And you can just put together a few little packages, a few little examples that they can have in their office when they're pitching to their clients and that's a pretty easy sell for them. Yeah. <clears throat> I just imagine when you said that like the best bride trophy. Yeah. Like something cheeky like cheeky that. Cheeky but easy, uh, low hanging fruit. Uh, so we actually have a couple of our um, clients that uh, are in the wedding industry that we'd like to actually uh, give a shout out to because they just make such great work. Um, the Cake Toppers uh, is actually from NKPDF Designs, uh, which we have some pictures of here. As you can see, this is for Derek and Josh Lee. Josh Lee? Derek Jeff. and Jesh Jeshley. Jeff. I should have pronounced that name before it popped up, but um, this Jeff. is a great uh, topper. Those are very unique names. You'll never find that at a you know at a uh, a store that has you know uh, kind of generic ones. So this is a great yeah. design. He has another one here. I think uh, yeah, this one is beautiful too. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Miss to the misses. Uh, that is just a gorgeous design. Simple, elegant. The black pops so well the with way the white it and the pink. Right there. Like Absolutely. I mean. These are just brilliant designs. Um, these are the type of things that we strive towards. So uh, really great job there in um, with the uh, NK PDF designs. Uh, those are absolutely terrific. Uh, the other guy, uh, other ones we wanted to call out is uh, Shut Media, or Shoot Media, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. All the students actually uh, got together and for their teacher's wedding, they made this, um, I guess this is a, uh, I guess a topper, what would you call it? Like a, Table topper, if you will, like yeah. it basically goes on top of the tables. It's part of the uh, the design for their um, thing. So as you can see, there's all these different um, <coughs> all these different uh, letters. And if you so go you can on, put their name on the plate or something of that sort. And as you can see, they're all cursive. Yeah, because uh, you can tie it all together very easily. Absolutely. Now this is probably my favorite one. Um, and this is a maker that actually doesn't even own a laser yet. He went into one of his local maker spaces in Texas. But imagine. And this, guys, I'm sorry, but this, the bar is going to be set very high here for engagements in the future. But imagine you wanted to engage someone very specially, and you could make a box that had a whole bunch of different puzzles that your fiancé or fiancé-to-be had to solve before they got to their ring, i.e., like, what was the day of our first kiss? Where did we first meet? Where did we have our first uh, trip to? And as she went through and solved all these puzzles, as we pull up the photo here, Charles, um, this box comes unlocked and at the end there's a, a uh, what do you would call it a ring inside yeah, and, ring and a proposal so I don't, if, Charles if you could go through some of the photos here as we uh, kind of see uh, is there another one of what's inside just no. this one well as you can see uh, we'll have a link that's gonna be right above uh, Walker's head right here um, with the uh, video and instructables and YouTube, but he has instructables that shows you exactly how he made it. A uh, YouTube video that kind of goes through the process and a little bit of the story. But it's a beautiful story, amazing project. It's One of the extremely <coughs> elaborate. Uh, probably the each, most elaborate. Each page yeah. unlocks and then opens up the next one. Like, yeah. And he so. uses a lot of different design elements. He uses great photo engraving. He uses notch work. He uses a lot of like um, hidden elements where slide techniques are used and really the mechanisms yeah. behind what you're seeing. So you're just seeing very simple movements uh, move. But the mechanism below actually unlocks the next section of the... I'm uh, uh, oh, sorry? Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, we have a, um, our producer Charles just reminded me, we have a little clip of, of the video that we'll have a link to up here in the corner, and uh, he'll actually play it here as it opens up. Uh, as you can see, it's stacked kind of high, and when you push the pieces together, i.e. when those two come together, it allows you to open up to the next page. It tells the story of their engagement, so now they have to move around these rings, and once you align, you know, the different items, um, it was three things that, you know, meant a lot to them in one of the things. You might move the slide up, you move to the next page. Here's another beautiful thing written up. Then you have to move these things around all to the right location. And after everything's moved in the right location, that allows the next page to open up, which is pretty cool. Then another little right up there, and they have a picture of them and the dog, and they slide those apart. You see the dogs there too. That was a little write-up how they started their family and the dog was part of their family and they're starting to build. And now they get to the end and this really great, I mean, look at this beautiful design and inside of there is where the ring would be. 
and then a picture of them on the back. I mean, just incredibly thoughtful, ingenious, elaborate, so, so impressed. I couldn't get more hats off to you, sir. That's just one of the most beautiful designs I've seen done with a laser. Um, and I'll tell you, if, if you want something to get your mom to get a little cheer up, send that to your mom. She'll, she'll really dig that. Um, anybody really that needs to pick me up, that's just a, it's a great little story. Another level. It's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, great job to those makers who are making a big difference in the wedding industry using lasers. Uh, that's not only really cool, but it's something that's going to be, they're going to be lucky they're out ahead of the game because soon there's going to be so many people with lasers that you're going to want to be, you're going to want to be established before it gets a little too um, flooded. Saturated. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah saturated is probably the best word for it because uh, lasers are becoming just more and more accessible. Like for instance, right now mm. we have the uh, riser rotary combo with the cool box for the Muse for only $5,000. So with the rotary, you're able to do really cool engravings like this glass, which uh, Walker, you're gonna show us how to do right now, right? Yep. So what are some of the things you wanna remember um, as you're doing engravings on the rotary uh, with, with glass? So always, we're gonna go through RE1, okay. and we're going to always enable the rotary. Okay. So if you don't enable the rotary, your design's gonna be spread across a lot longer and look funky. Okay, so if you don't enable the rotary, uh, essentially it doesn't translate the uh, X movement to the rotary, it just does a loose X movement, which would just uh, essentially elongates the file, right? Yeah, it's gonna elongate it. And before <coughs> even enabling in the software, you're gonna connect your rotary. Absolutely, so um, connecting the rotary is real simple though, it's just a three prong plug. Do we wanna show people that um, inside the machine? Yeah, we could do so. If we jump to the machine, I'll show you. <coughs> just hold the light for you. Alrighty. Yeah. Want to man this, or do you want to? Uh, I'll man it. Okay. Loosen this up. It's pretty tight. I'm probably gonna break it. You should do that since I. It's okay. I'm probably gonna break it. <clears throat> so there we go. This is the old connection, right in here. That's your Y motor uh, plug. So, so you unplug the Y motor plug. And then you're going to plug in your rotary attachment. So the rotary you just have set inside the machine here then? Yeah. So, so what's the first thing you want to do when you have your rotary set up? So you're going to put your rotary inside, and then you're going to lower your Z table. <clears throat> this there is the go. Z table. And you're going to lower that so that your, you know, your thing is high enough to be in focus. Okay. So in this case, it's your glass. We have it all lined up. It doesn't take too much. And we have paper on the... Can you guys walk through that again? It's hard to see. Them. Oh, no problem. All right. It will give a little better angle here. Cool. So, we'll walk through this guy. No, no, that's good. No, that's good. Yeah, walk through the part right. here where you have this. So, we're going to lower the Z table until this is in focus. So that's one of the advantages of having the uh, Pro Series Vice the Muse uh, with the rotary, uh, and that's why we're showing it on the Pro, is with the Z table, it's really easy just to Z table down and throw your rotary in right away. Mm -hmm. Undo one plug, plug it in, enable it, and you're working with the rotary, right? Yeah, you're good to go. You, automatic Z table with the uh, push button, it's super simple. And then you're just gonna line it up. So if we move our motor, you can see that so replaces your Y motor. So as, you, as the Y is you're essentially um, going up and down on the X, Y axis, instead of going up and down, you are just rotating the object. Yeah. Okay, so it's what are we going to do here with the water? So you can see that there's a paper towel. Now the paper towel is doubled up. And it's just got a little dry in us, right? Like we put it on there wet, right? Yeah, it was supposed to be wet. It dried out after us talking so much. So. <laughs> So we're just dripping on a little bit of water, right? Yeah, we're adding water to the tissue. And then we're going to push this glass until it's flush with this edge. Now, why do we want to push it until it's flush against the edge? It might have motion since it is rounded on the top mm -hmm. and the bottom. It might shift while it's running. So it just helps keep it aligned. Yeah, it helps keep it aligned and these guys as well. OK, perfect. So do you want to switch to the software and show them how we? Yeah, let's switch to the software real quick. So you can see our glass is ready, it's in focus, and <clears throat> we have our software up here, which is RE1, 
And what we did was click this icon that enabled the rotor. So, okay, so that's really easy. Super simple. And this is our design. Now, if you go to your design software, this is how it's going to look inside your design software. And knowing that you're going to go up from the top down mm -hmm. your and your uh, material sideways, that glass is sitting sideways in there. So you want to turn it, what, 45 degrees? No, well, it'd be 90, 90 degrees. 90 degrees. <laughs> yeah, 90 degrees. Math's hard. It's okay. Yeah. Math's hard. Twice as much. And yeah. uh, then it'll be facing the right way. So essentially, uh, and especially using RE1 since there's no uh, switching, let's say you saved it like that and had an RE1, could you just use one of your um, um, tools on the left to, to turn it? Yeah, you could just turn it on here like this. But you just want to remember to keep it oriented such that it's the same way it is in the machine. Yeah, Okay. exactly. So my power settings are going to be 23 power Okay. and uh, speed of 60. Now I found that's ideal to jump through. That's going to go through that tissue paper and uh, and just give it an ideal look. Nice. Now, what DPI do you have it set at? DPI, I'm mm. going to do a simple 250. Okay. Now, what's the reason you want to use 250 rather than 500 or 1,000? Some people have the conception that if I use a higher DPI, I'm going to get a better uh, output. So with glass, you're not actually engraving into it like wood or something of that sort. You're creating micro micro fractures. <coughs> hard to say, <coughs> and uh, and too much heat. Oh, it kicked on. I think that's the chiller just kicked um, on. Excuse yeah. that. We have uh, aircraft taking so, <laughs> off in the, in the studio. So too much heat is going to actually make even more micro fractures. So essentially, those big, those little micro fractures become big cracks. And yeah, it starts big to flake, cracks right? and it starts to flake, and yeah. that's not ideal for glass. And that's why we add the actual tissue paper or napkin with the water. Okay, cool. Because that's going to cool it down and keep it from creating too much micro well, Let's get this software off the screen here so we can get something uh, with some action. Uh, so we can get these guys uh, showing something. Let's see. Uh, i uh, got a question looks like over here. Sorry about that. Um, Ruben, looks like we have uh, Gil Noel asking, we like to use liquid hand soap when etching glass. Liquid hand soap is another great tool to use. Um, the reason why liquid hand soap works really great is the compound actually um, acts a little bit as a lubricant better than the, the water does. So it just kind of uh, enhances, but it essentially has the same effect. Liquid hand soap is good because you don't really need to put paper towel down with it. You can just use a little bit of soapy hand soap and kind of rub it on the glass and it works mm -hmm. just the same. So. I'm going to run the uh, perimeter, just okay. double check it. So if we go into the machine. So if we look in the machine, we'll notice as we run the perimeter that, oops, that it'll actually spin uh, rather than move around. So you'll notice that the laser will go pass back and forth from left to right, but still rotate as you would. So you can use that to double check your location real quick one last time. All right, now we have our settings and I am just going to hit play. All right, so again, we're running these settings at 60% speed. And that's also at uh, 23 power at 250 DPI. Now, as you can see, um, it's it's barely noticeable the movement of the glass as it rotates around. And at 250 DPI, the speed's not too bad at all. Yeah. What is this job? Uh, speed time. Oh, uh, it's under two minutes. So if you imagine about two minutes per glass is a pretty reasonable time uh, to run off a uh, set of glasses for a wedding. If you imagine you did it for a wedding party and there were, let's say, uh, 100 people in a wedding party, 10, 5 on each side, yeah. 10 or 12, you could run an entire wedding parties off, you know, in an afternoon very easily. Now, yeah, good idea there, turn it down a bit. So as you can see, we have um, there's a little bit of smoke uh, and not a lot of exhaust pull. We have those two things off as we're just etching the glass. Really, the only real smoke that's coming up is coming off of the uh, the paper that we have on there white. Uh, Michael Wilcox, what's up, dude? Um, looks like we have uh, uh, yes, Jeff Hayes yes. acting. Actually, that is a P series 90 watt. We're doing this on a uh, P24 90 watt. Uh, uh, tube here. Um, this is one of our favorite machines across the board. It's the uh, least expensive way to get into a 90 watt machine uh, with a 24 by 16 inch table. You can actually pass through four foot by two foot pieces of material with the pass through doors. Motorized Z table gives you eight inches full of uh, uh, Z room. Plus, when you take off the knife bed, as you can see, you can throw in the rotary and have it rocking and rolling in just a moment's time. Yeah, and that, all that smoke is just really the tissue paper. If you no, were doing that's all tissue, yeah. Yeah, if you were doing just glass, it would be nothing. Looks like we're all set. I'll just pull it. Yeah? yeah, pull it out. So we're just gonna pull this out, and I guess we'll put the uh, Show them. the leather in there to take a look. Um, we'll give this a peel. Looks like a little stick in the middle, and then beautifully, if we look, 
gorgeous glass etching. Can you see us seeing us in the monitor? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. So there you are, J and K, for just joking. And that's, <laughs> that's why I do yeah. it. Um, is that going to focus? There we go. So, like I said, uh, really easy to use the rotary. Um, as you can see, uh, we just popped a glass in, got started, rocked and rolling in about five minutes. Uh, went from setup to having a glass engraved. Um, really easy to do, really easy to use. Uh, just as easy to use on the Muse or the Hobby Series. Looks like we have another question coming in. Um, Christy Curley, uh, shoot the goals high and do the entire wedding as a favor for the guest. Often do this for a few weddings a month, which brings in more income. And if the pattern is the same, there's no uh, resetting. So if you calculate the labor costs, it is minimal. I absolutely yeah. couldn't agree more, uh, Christy. That's a great comment. Um, the cost and overhead to just gift these to people as you're first starting out is, is no, almost nothing. So go and make some free things um, and go out and you know gift it to different people to get uh, get your name out there. Like Chrissy said, um, do them as favors uh, for the guest and then uh, you know build your name going off that. Uh, I'm sorry, you were getting our attention for another question, Scott? No, if you have an RF, the example of it. All right, so sorry about that. So we have um, a perfect example here for our, um, our ROI example for uh, cake topper. So a generic average uh, cake topper, um, you know, is uh, anywhere from five to ten, a uh, ten to fifteen bucks. A customizable one on Amazon is anywhere between twenty-five and forty bucks. Cost of material per um, cake topper is under four dollars. Like you could probably argue that's under two dollars, but to be very generous and to account for anything you might do, it's about four dollars, um, which is about a twelve by twelve piece of material. Um, I think that's why we did that math really easily. <laughs> so you can really do two cake toppers in those twelve by twelve piece of material. Um, so you're, you know, you figured about seven dollars in total raw material with everything. Cost and time. These things. I think this this file was ran off in what twenty minutes? Twenty five minutes? Oh. Less. Less than that. Yeah. This is a very quick file. Even with the gazebo, it's yeah. a very quick file. So you uh, got to imagine you can do two of these in about a half hour, four hours. No, the thinking hour. is you can just create templates of like different styles, like five different styles, and yeah. then just imagine you, you know, in yeah, those absolutely. styles. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, with that type of ROI uh, look, I mean, it's really easy to see how quickly these type of items can, you know, quickly, quickly uh, turn a profit for you. Uh, not to mention that if you start using um, higher end materials, starting getting a little more elaborate, doing personalized ones that um, are far more elaborate than just simply putting, you know, the, uh, oops, that broke, I broke that right off. Uh, oh. that Instead nice. of doing simply the, something like this with the Jones, uh, you could do something that's maybe multi-layered, maybe even has lights, maybe Maybe it has, you know, different type of textures, things dangling off, you know. There's yeah. a whole bunch of things you can do, and you can personalize it and stylize it to match their wedding. That's probably the best part. Um, looks like we have a couple questions. Uh, any linear rail lubrication recommendations? Actually, uh, that's a great question as we're talking about the Pro 24. What's the, what's the oil of choice, or uh, the uh, lube oil of choice? So white lithium grease is preferred on your linear rails. Absolutely. So now, you can use some of the other standard oils you'll find in your uh, common stores, but you, you don't want it to be too sticky. You want that, no, no, no. Yeah, you want that grease to uh, stay in your rail and not attract too much uh, dust and clutter it's to it. It's really standard for mechanical electronics. Absolutely. It looks like uh, in Arizona we have Beth, and she's asking, is the riser required to run the rotary on the Muse, or does the riser just add extra space? Uh, the riser is not required to run the rotary, but you do need to remove the floor and give yourself at least that eight inches of room that the riser provides in order to have enough room for the rotary. So while it's not necessarily required to use the rotary, it's highly recommended. It's, it's why the uh, it's why the product was developed. You know, because it's pretty impossible to use the rotary without it. Um, now you could prop up your machine on blocks, I suppose, or make your own at-home riser. Some people have, yeah. Some people have uh, to some varying levels of success. Uh, if you're looking for preci precision and you want things to fit perfect and you want that alignment to be right, um, my suggestion would be just to get the riser simply to keep things square, level, and correct. Um, it fits together really easy. You just take off the floor of your muse, um, plop the muse on top, and you're ready to rock and roll. It's actually one of the easiest things to install as far as an accessory goes with your muse. Unless you're doing some weird MacGyver stuff, then... Then, yeah, do yeah. your thing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, do your um, thing. Oh, it looks like uh, in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, Megan asks, uh, hey guys, love the show. Thanks so much, Megan. Any ideas of what I can do with the laser for my flower shop? This is actually lines perfectly with the uh, weddings. Uh, that's a great question, Megan. I can imagine just offering um, to all the wedding guests that come in and all the 
you know, if you're a flower shop that services weddings, you're on a list and people come to you and people know that you're the flowers in town, a florist in town that does the weddings. If you just had a few of these as offerings as, you know, it doesn't necessarily just have to be wedding bouquets. It can be, you know, funerals, um, bar mitzvahs, uh, quinceaneras, um, any type of celebration where people send a ton of flowers. You can personalize and laser cut you know, items for inside those bouquets uh, yeah. with ease. Uh, uh, Cards, toppers. Yeah, really, there's no, there's no limit for a, uh, for a flower shop. It almost seems like a flower shop would be an ideal place to have a laser, especially if you were a flower shop and you offered other gifts, specialized, personalized gifts. Yeah, it's weird. I, I take laser stuff, and I find a lot of women love the way, you know, it looks and delicate, especially paper things. Like, my grandma loves it. Absolutely. Uh, looks like Michael from Facebook asks about the speed of the laser head. He's asking, what is the linear speed of the laser head while rastering? At, let's say, 100%. This would help greatly in translating projects from users of other brands of lasers in which the speed and waters are supplied. A little simple math would get us very close in theory. Uh, Michael, easy rule of thumb, 100% speed on the hobby laser is about an inch per second. I know most other lasers, especially foreign lasers, um, I'm sure that's where you're pulling those numbers from, because most US-based lasers and even Canadian-based lasers actually don't use speed like that. They use percentages. Um, it's for a reason. Most of the time it's because really specifically like that speed is a bit of an industry, I guess a trade secret if you feel a little bit of a, like it's not necessarily like top secret or something like you couldn't just figure out by you know measuring, but you can figure about an inch per second um, with 100% speed. That's the yeah. easiest math to do. And that gets you plenty close enough as far as cut speeds for uh, um, vector cuts. You should get one of those cop things. <laughs> yeah, <Ross> speed <laughs> guns. Okay, it looks like we have one more question from Michael. Is there any way to know the number of hours on the tube? If I recall, I saw something about an internal meter. If so, can it be accessed by the user? So, there is actual a counter for how many hours you use a machine up until the activation point. Activation point's going to let you know how many hours, hours is up. So why do we do that with the 80 hours? So it's a safety thing. So if your machine gets taken or stolen or something of that sort, misplaced, somebody else has it. Mostly in shipping, right? So yeah, if mostly showed, in shipping. Yeah, so yeah. i.e. if this laser showed up on your doorstep, it's a very large, expensive item. If someone walks off with it, at the very least, after they're using it, they'll only be able to use it for 80 hours. Now, the yeah. reason why we leave 80 hours is it gives you a grace period when you get the machine where you don't have to necessarily register the machine right away yeah. and worry about using it. Like, the last thing we want is you to get the machine home on a Saturday, get it set up, and have to worry about, like, calling in to register it so it turns out like but that. As soon as you can activate it, do, because I've had Absolutely. people in the middle of jobs are all excited, oh, you know, yeah, they the set worst. up, and it's the weekend, and then they go to hit play, and it's been 80 hours. Yeah. So be sure, that's, uh, you'll see it all over your documentation, register right away. It takes just a simple email in to give a number off your machine. Uh, that's all right. You just get yeah, yeah. So you're going to go into the software and grab your activation, and then you're going to copy into an email. And that's it. It's uh, real simple to do. Uh, then we activate on our end, and you're good to go. Uh, beautiful thing about that, too, if your machine ever gets stolen, we can help you out in a LoJack sort of way, and actually, if they're connected to the Internet, find the machine for you and actually shut it down. So let us know if there's ever been a problem like that as well. I think we did hear a story about a guy who bought a hobby laser secondhand, but the guy who sold it to him didn't mention any of this. And so he went to try to like log in and use it and he was like kind of locked out and he called us. He's like, this this yeah. machine, why can't I use it? It's like, oh, you need to call the people who had it before yeah, you. It's really not yours. Really. Yeah, yeah, so we it took us a minute to clear it up, but avoid situations like that um, on the hand. So uh, make sure you get your thing registered. Um, we'll jump right into our weekly contest winner real quick. Um, one of our favorite makers, Dal Hart at uh, Phoenix Latex, made these great little items here. Check these bad boys out. Ooh. Uh, she does latex, like, clothing. Absolutely. So these uh, pieces here will be used as details on uh, one of her items. Uh, great job, uh, Dal, once again, uh, one of our favorite makers. Uh, she got one of our muses early on. Uh, she's been using it uh, with a lot of success for a long time, so thanks a lot for uh, shouting us out all the time, Dal, and uh, congratulations. You got a uh, lens coming your way or some money to use towards an FSL purchase. Said, uh, Speaking cool What's that? She said she might get the cool box. Oh. Excellent. Great job, Dal. Um, yeah. That would be a great addition uh, to the thing. You'll notice a big difference with the cool box, mostly because if you're tired of using the bucket, like, Oh, you got to be were, right? I was so ready to get rid of the bucket. The bucket was a huge, huge pain. Uh, once you get rid of the bucket, though, now you got to think the cool box has the air compressor, your chiller right in a small condensed unit, and you actually get another exhaust fan that goes on the back of your unit that is as powerful as your exhaust fan now. And if you already have an exhaust fan, it's just going to add more draw to your yeah. machine. So it's just a nice little added bonus. Uh, I think you'll be a big fan, Dal. 
Uh, so moving on real quick, speaking of money, we have a referral program that we just started here at Full Spectrum Laser. So if you're a Full Spectrum Laser customer and you know someone who's looking for a laser cutter, send them on over to your sales staff and we will absolutely hook them up with a referral program. So now how we're going to work that is if you refer someone and they purchase a the machine, we'll give you $200 cash or $500 in FSL credit. Now we'll have a link and stuff for that down in the description below. We'll have a graphic next week for it, but our referral program just started. If you're a current customer, you probably got an email mentioning and telling you all about it. If you have any questions, give us an email um, at marketing or send your sales uh, sales representative an email and they'll tell you all about it. But it's real simple. You just fill out a form, takes two seconds with the name, email, and phone number of the referral you have. And uh, I think it's like 30 days, like as soon as the sale goes through, um, you know, we go through, we contact you and you get your, your credit. Um, so if you were looking to get a new tube or wanted to upgrade to a rotary risery or maybe we're trying to get a new machine yes you know throw throw some seeds in some of your friends ears and uh, you know build some credit up help that out with the, the down payments on your new machine um, looks like we had one more no one I think we build? yeah I think we got that done with Megan um, what are we doing for the one-hour build this week so it's gonna be a pen holder a fancy pen holder so tell me about this pen holder so it's going to hold pens Wow Wow <laughs> super fancy hold your pen like this it's that's if you got cool. a fancy pen, that's Boom. what you need. So um, pen holders we'll make with uh, <clears throat> Ruben and Walker on Friday. Make sure you come and check it mm -hmm. out. Um, as always, uh, make sure you check out uh, the uh, survey that we have. It may seem like we uh, say this every week, but I promise you every week someone fills out the survey. Sometimes it's a dozen people. Sometimes it's 50 people. And every one of those surveys we learn something from. So whether it be features of RE3, new features on the machine, offering different types of uh, um, items and consumables and application uh, type of uh, things like anything that you're suggesting we're listening and we're trying to do that's honestly why we do the in the cut live um, videos on Facebook so you can see things like granite being engraved which by the way which is one of the things we kind of forgot uh, to mention totally skipped totally over skipped it. over our best thing uh, you might have seen it yesterday on in the cut but this is a big thick slab of granite and we engraved a beautiful wedding photo on this from a wedding that I believe happened up in Canada on a stormy day but what a beautiful photo to represent just a rainy day wedding uh, this is done on granite and I'll tell you if you're doing wedding photography and you can do uh, add-on that you can get your favorite wedding photo uh, etched in stone forever that's pretty powerful. Um, cool. So this is granite. This type of block you can get at um, like a normal tile store. I don't think uh, like a Home Depot or Lowe's has this type of black granite tile, but if you go yeah. in like a home floor and decor or tile store or whatever, just go get black polished tile. They usually cost about five bucks a square foot. Like I think these were four ninety nine, but yep. a five dollar base cost. You can easily sell this to someone on their wedding day for one hundred dollars or more. A hundred dollars is actually probably. I would say that's probably low on the spectrum of this. Uh, I think if they see it, they like get Absol so excited and absolutely. So you can do a couple things with this. On the back, you can put on hanging things, so this can hang on the wall. You can put some pads on it so it lays flat on the table. But these black granite uh, tiles are great for engraving. Uh, it looks great. We've done a few of these before. I know you've seen, but this wedding photo just turned mm. out gorgeous. I mean, if you're really awesome and you get a new house with your spouse, oh, yeah. and then put that in the house, you know, like install it. Absolutely. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about more of that uh, next week. We brushed a little bit on some small business applications of the lasers, but next week we'll dive into um, many different small businesses and small business applications for the laser that not only laser uh, current laser users can uh, use and offer as services to small businesses, but also things that small businesses can do by purchasing the laser. Yeah, I just saw his note, double uh, as his tombstone. Uh, what's that? Doubles, doubles as a tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> it does indeed double as a tombstone. It works perfect. Yeah. Um, so uh, Some people do tombstones. Uh, they oh. absolutely do. Um, actually, there's some great, uh, we saw some people that did some great uh, memorials for pets that they had lost in the backyard. And now Fluffy the fish and Pancake the cat Fluffy. have um, little memorials. Pancake? Did they name it after the, the accident? <laughs> That's terrible. That's a terrible <laughs> dead cat joke, and I'm not. My dad's gonna be proud. He's gonna love that. Yeah. 
Um, so again, we have a couple deals, a couple specials that we'd love just to mention real quick. Uh, if you're in the, if you're looking for another laser, looking for a new laser, uh, we have a Pro 20 sale going on. This is probably our best sale at the moment, just because it's the cheapest you can get into a Pro Series laser. If you're looking to start a business, looking to get into rotary, um, this is the way to do it. You get the chiller, you get the machine, everything you need at 4,500 bucks set up to get into a Pro Series machine. If you're starting a business with a laser, this is the best $4,500 you can spend. It's reliable, the gantry, the rails, everything on it is just beastly, uh, operates like a champ. Uh, you'll be able to upgrade this with RE3 soon. This Pro 20 sale is the real deal. Um, I've had so many people text me, is this price real? It's like, yeah, it's real. Um, and it should really be taken advantage because it's really inventory based. As soon as these are sold out, uh, this sale, that price will never be seen again. So make sure you take advantage of it when you can. We also have, again, uh, we'll mention again, the cool box sale combo with the rotary, riser, cool box, and muse, the whole package for $5,000. Now, that's a crazy sale. Uh, $5,000 is the base price for just the muse. We've added on two accessories to package it all together to help promote yeah. this cool box. I you mean, don't what, need anything else. Right? Absolutely not. If you think about this, uh, this $5,000 special with the rotary, riser, cool box, this is almost like getting a pro machine with the riser rotary. This is the closest thing you can get to a pro machine at $5,000. So again, mm -hmm. another great option if you're looking to start a pro sumer type business, something that was in the middle, maybe not 40 hours a week, but maybe we're going to have something that's going to be 10 to 20 hours a week of use. This is a great machine for that. Any type of home use, obviously, this is the best tabletop uh, laser cutter on the market, um, by hands far. down, by far. Um, and let's say you're a makerspace or EDU, we actually have a great sale where you can get six MUSE for the price of five. So if you were looking to get multiple MUSE for your makerspace or education space, you can actually get multiple MUSE and get a free MUSE in the process. So keep that in mind uh, as you're going forward looking for lasers. And again, make sure you tune in with us on one hour cuts, or sorry, in the cuts <laughs> where we do our live, uh, our live engravings and cuts on the laser, as well as our one hour build on Friday with Ruben and Walker, where we'll be making a very cool pen yeah. holder. Uh, it sounds like we're maybe downplaying that a little bit, but it really is a cool design. When they like, see it, I think they'll like it. I think so, too. It's got a really cool, like, kind of nautical, old Yeah, it's worldy. got industrial feel. It's real fancy. Real fancy. Yeah, real fancy. It's a fancy pen holder. That's real good. <clears throat> okay, I think that's all we got uh, for today. It looks like <clears throat> we went about 40 minutes, so we didn't keep you on the phone for too long. Mom, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah. That was a long call. Jeez. Um, so, again, just give a quick shout out to our makers, uh, the Cake Toppers by NKPDF Designs. That's a hashtag, or they're, uh, if you want to find them, you can go at NKPDF Designs uh, for the Cake Toppers. If you want to check out the, um, the students and how they made uh, that uh, for their teacher's wedding, we have at Shoot Media. Uh, which is again for that second design we saw, and then the fairy tale puzzle proposal box. Just click the link if you're watching on YouTube up in the corner. Uh, down in the uh, description, Ruben will put the link to his instructable. We'll put the link to his YouTube video up in the corner. Just check it out. Um, it's really one of the coolest things you'll see made on laser. I hope it inspires you to do something great with your laser. Uh, so until we see you next time, you know, check out all our other videos on <coughs> YouTube and um, keep making. Yeah, we'll see you next time.